sorry for the interlude. So we have what we call wrapper classes. Wrapper classes are nothing but what? Real life classes or objects that wrap the primitive types. So when I say integer in Java, you have a class integer. Here, I've just created a, a class of name and primitive type. We've all used to the end. Um, float. You know, in Java, if you are writing the float, you need to add our f to specify its float, and either you get an error, it will see it as something else. When I remove it, let's read this and see the error. Type is my cannot convert from double to at float. If you leave it like that, see it as double. And when you move from double to float, you are doing what? Down casting, unless you cast it. So yes, add f, capital F for small n. This does the compiler supposed to be a floating point number. In Java, it sees it, but in order to for you to know this what you are working on, you want to know. Assuming I have size, this is equal to this. Then somewhere in my code, I'm using the weight. Weight is equal to this. This is equal to this. In order for you to know that, now you are working this value is so what a floating point value. That's why I just put f for you to know that this is so what. A float by default, you know, uh, double is a double position of what the floating point number. So, whatever the double is doing, the flow is supposed to do it. But when it comes in terms of space, there will be precision loss. So, in order for it to help you yourself, just add the F for you to know that no, this is what a floating point, or it's just to remind you. Then you have the car. Now these primitive types, when I print them, print the age plus weight plus size plus The character. You get an error. It's used to concatenate strings. It's just like you are building string. This one kind of, this one string. This method takes a string. Double code. So when you are breaking it into parts, you just have to break the string into parts. So you have first name, last name. You want to put it together. First name plus last name. It become one word. If you want space, make sure you bring the space. Whatever you fast with, so bring them together. Now we'll come to string manipulation soon. It prints these values for us. Whatever I just passed. These are the primitive types. We also have um, wrapper classes. Now, the purpose of the wrapper classes are that there are some frameworks which only works on classes they don't work on primitive types and also the wrapper classes comes with a lot of added methods 
apart from this primitive, just declaring variable and initializing it. Let me just summarize everything. So for the integer, its wrapper class version will be capital integer. It's a class. So when you are creating it, it's equal to new integer. So you see it has two overloads. One which takes an integer, one which takes what? A string. Let me just pass a normal integer to it. I'll pass the h to it. This is an integer. So I'll pass this h to it. When I come here, I print the proper h. It will give me the first h, which is 90. This is nothing my what? A class. This is a class. That takes an integer. And we call it wrapper class. It's used to what? Wrap the what? The primitive type. That's why we call them wrapper class. It's just like to take the primitive type, whatever it's doing, I'm doing it and I've added extra functionalities. I've made it more powerful, more better. Now, it's not just used for declaration as you do with the normal integer. You can, it also has a lot of methods. So to know the methods, you just, you've already created what? A reference to this object. So you just say proper dot. Then you can see there are a lot of methods here. Byte value, compare to, find a double value, float value, int value, long value. So it's automatically what? Converting to the type that you want for you. Minimum value, maximum value, the size, the type, bit count, decode, compare, a lot of methods. A lot of methods. We'll see the use as you progress, especially when it comes to collections. But these are some of the uses. So if I want the byte value of this integer, let me just get a byte value and print that one out. So the byte value is 390. Let me try something else. Play with the other methods. Let me see the float value, what it will give me. It adds 0 to 8. Let me try the other methods. For the compare to to return an integer, the value of and this one is different not together. We use it but not now. See the size. See what it returns. Thirty two. It returns the size of an integer. So these are all the methods that come with the wrapper classes. So this one integer. You also have a float. Float is capital F. It's a class. So always don't forget the new keyword. New float. It also takes double or float. I'll just pass a float to it. I'll pass the weight to it. So that one too. If I want to test it. It features I just created float capital F new at float and I pass the value I want to pass to it so I'm, it's like converting from primitive to what um, a reference type a class is a reference type and when you are moving from primitive to a reference type you call it auto boxing come to that let's just play it. So here this time, we are playing with the proper proper weight dot. That one to task it matters. You check whether it's infinite. You want to know 
whether the, that value is infinite. When you see NAN, it means it's not a number. Sometimes you'll be seeing them. You run some computation and it will return what? NAN, not a number. So you want to check whether this is what? Not a number. You want the end value, get bytes, positive infinity, negative infinity, not a number. You can set all these values to it. To hex, if you want to convert it to like the decimal, you want to pass floats. So that's it. Then we also have the character. We also have the double as well. Double. And they all come from this package. Java.lang package. You can see from here. Any class that you are typing, you know the source. Java.lang package. So the double also comes from the double. New double. I pass the size to it. Let me just pass them. I'm passing a string. You know it takes, it has two values for the constructor. One takes a string, one takes what? A double. This time I'm trying the what? The string. I'll just display the proper size. It prints, it converts the string to what? A double for us. So for all the primitive types, you can just pass the string to it. Just look at the constructor. Let's try the character. Character to start with capital. But this time is four spellings. Character. So proper. The proper is not a convention. I'm just using it. New character. Character is only one word. Character. So you can convert a string to character. So it takes only one character. So I can pass this to it. And then that one too, you can play around with it. So these are the wrapper classes. If I want the integer value. So sometimes you might be doing some logic. Maybe you ask the person to enter some his name. As you are scrolling through the text, you can use the character to check. Is it an alphanumeric? Or is it this? Is it this? Is it this? Let me just show you an example. So far, if not done anything, take an input from the keyboard, right? Let me introduce you to it. To get anything from the keyboard as at now. There's another class you have to use. Scanner. So if I want to get an input from the keyboard, then I'll use the character. So I just say scanner. Scan. I've already I've not imported, so when I press the control space, it will not come. It's equal to new scanner. You can see it has so many overloads. One takes file input stream. Input stream, path, readable, readable byte, string. Just use the input stream then pass system. You know when you are printing out, you are using the word system.out. When you are using for, from the console to use the word system.out in, the out is just writing to this console. This is the dot out. So the in to you are taking from what? This console. So when I write this, Scanner dot get system dot in. Now, if I want to scan, this name can be anything. I called my what? Scan. You know it. So I can, if I want to get the integer, so let me say, let me make it interactive. From this time, we'll be building interactive. 
please enter your password then if I want to capture the password I will scan so let me declare a string here okay I'll just declare it down here string password is equal to scan dot scan dot next if you want to capture is the next the next will capture the string just look at the return type this next if you want to capture an integer you have next int this one return what an integer if you want to capture floats next floats if you want to capture double next double at the moment i just want to capture a string so i can either use next line or the string let me use the next one so this one just read it then for the start let's just i'll comment these guys comment them then i'll just print out what the person entered so this out again i'll just ask are you sure this is your password so there is i will break out of this i want to insert the password here i want to insert the password here so that's where the concatenation comes so i'll first have to stop it double quote means that you've terminated our string then plus the password then plus another double quote I'm inserting this variable from whatever I read from the command line, then I will insert it here. I break out of the word, the string, double quotes, then plus whatever I want to insert over there. Then after that, I'll continue from there. So anytime you see that plus, we are concatenating strings. So let's try this and see the output. So once that's kind of waiting for me. So when I type coffee, you can see it's accepted. Are you sure this coffee is your password? Let's change the sentence. Are you sure coffee is your password? Are you sure coffee is your password? So then if you want to get the feedback, or if you want to check whether the name contains what only what alphabet i wanted us to use the this character class so first this is what i will do i'll create a for loop to look through the content of the what the password and i'll compare each character to see whether it's what alphanumeric so just normal for loop for and i is equal to zero I less than I can get the length of the what the password so I'll just say password dot size or length any of them there's length property so dot length I plus plus so I'll be looping through whatever the person will enter then I'll be scanning each character one by one to check whether it's what alphanumeric so as I go through I'll just create another character so character or oh, I can use the one up there, but let's create a new one. Check alpha. Check alpha. So new alpha. I'll just pass some dummy character and note. When you are using um, character, you can't create it without initializing it. This one, it doesn't contain anything. So it will complain. So always you must pass a valid. So if you don't want to pass it, just leave. Give it a space. A space is a character. A space is a character. So for the default, I'll just pass what? Space as a character. 
then here I'll check I'll check I'll let it check alpha dot is alpha is alphabetic then I'll pass the what the value of what each character in the string we've not discussed string here but string also has properties password dot get Car at yes. So password dot character at there's a car to so discuss string version. Car at so I want to know the character at this index i. So at index zero, this one should check for me. Now this one will return me a boolean. This stuff will return me a boolean. So this is what I'll just do. I'll put the whole of this in an if. So if we said in Java, all conditions must accept true boolean or what? False. So this one will tell me true or false. So if whatever the person entered is alphabetic, then we just display that. Your name or your password contains an alphabet. So let's try our logic and see. So here, first I'll type, I should have done the else part. Let me just type. Are you sure you want to? So you can see it is scanning all the character one by one. To make it nice, let me just say, get a uh, each character. So I'll just say, your password contains this, then I'll break out of it, so I'll terminate it, plus, I'll paste whatever I want to do, plus, do it again. You can break them into lines. You can break them into lines, like this. Don't necessarily have to make it one long line like that. So here, we are looping through the content of whatever the person entered. Then you are getting each character and we are checking whether it's what an alphabet. The power lies in your hands. You can decide what to do with it. Let me just give it an else part. Else. Your input is not an alphabet. So let's try again. I want to enter one, two, three. Your input is not it's not what an alphabet because it's one two three to so look to what three times I run it again your password contains K alphabet O alphabet F alphabet let me just mix it for few one two so you can see both there true part and the false part is what working so this is how you can play or manipulate the wrapper classes with the words the primitive types now when you are moving from a primitive type to an, a wrapper class you call it auto boxing auto boxing but when you are moving from wrapper to primitive unboxing so when you have unboxing, it's just like, you see the wrapper is wrapping the primitive type. So when you open the box, you are unboxing it to get a primitive type. When you are encapsulating the primitive, you are auto-boxing. And that one is default. That's why all the constructors take the words, the primitive types.